Hey everybody, it's Bubble Peas. Welcome back to some more Pokemon Leaf Green. In the last episode, we arrived here in Fuchsia City, and in this episode, there's a couple things that you could do. Uh, for example, take on the gym, but I'd rather just go ahead and go right to the Safari Zone. And you do have to go to the Safari Zone at some point because there are required HMs that you have to get that can only be obtained by going through here. So, without any further ado, let's head in. For just 500 Poké Dollars, you can play a Safari game. You can roam the wide open Safari and catch what you like. Would you like to play? Yes, of course, dub. You kind of have to. Um, so here's the basic rules. You're given 30 kinds of Pokéballs that have the exact same catch rate as a Great Ball, but there are a lot of Pokémon in here. And then there's all these guys all over the place. I'm uh, blah 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 Pokémon kids blah blah boyfriend blah. Okay. But yeah, no one is really too important. There's a couple hints that some people give you, but I'll cover pretty much everything right now. Um, basically, there's grass everywhere. And there's some old and new Pokemon, and I'm gonna try to find a new one so I can start doing the bios. Let me actually go back to the first area. I'm wasting a lot of stuff by doing this, but also, See up there on the top left, where it says 487 out of 600, that is how many steps I've got left. So if you want to grind out and try to catch a bunch of Pokemon, I advise you stand in one space like I just did right there, and just spin in a circle, because you won't be wasting steps that way. Anyway, here we got Rhyhorn. Uh, Rhyhorn, it's got pretty good HP, attack and defense, it's a great physical tank. Uh, just be careful about uh, special types that it's weak against, particularly water and grass. Uh, it's actually one of the better rock types, even though its final evolution comes in a later generation. Uh, but it can evolve into at least Rhydon right now, and it's basically take your pick between Golem and Rhydon, who's got the higher attack and defense. I've said before that I don't really like Onyx because all it's got is ridiculously high defense and everything else sucks. Uh, I still stand by that. I would choose Rhydon or Golem, just take your pick, if you need a rock type, or a ground type for that matter, without uh, worrying about subtypes. Um, is there another Pokemon we can get? Ooh, Parasect. The evolution of the suckiest suck to ever suck. Um, yeah, Parasect, I talked about before with, uh, Paris. It can learn Spore, which is a 100% accuracy move that puts foes to sleep. But guess what? It sucks in every other way, shape, and form, so don't get it. Next! Um, let's actually move on to the next area. And regardless of whatever I run into, I'll do a buy on the next one. Uh, do 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 what we got here. Here we got Execute. Alright, so first of uh, a bunch of newly attainable Pokemon that have no like evolutionary form of stuff that we've already seen. Uh, it's a very solid grass type, great stats all around. Uh, its special defense is kind of low, and so is its speed, but its speed can actually be doubled if you use the move Sunny Day. So then you can abuse the high special attack, It's got you can learn uh, Solar Beam, which will attack immediately if the sun is up, plus it's a great same type attack bonus move, oh my god, this, I cannot say enough good about uh, Executor honestly in this game, it's really good, and there you go, Sunny Day right there. So if you want to get an Execute, by all means, go ahead. Uh, Alright, so here's Nidorina female, so I guess I'll go ahead and talk about Nidorina. Um, Nidorina, I've talked about before, you can pick it up if you want a weaker but bulkier version of uh, Nidorino. Uh, it's got, st still, a great move pool, balanced stats, and you guys know I've got a Nido Queen on my team, and to my knowledge it has not let me down, so yeah, it's really good. And I'll actually just jump right over to Nidorino. Uh, yeah, just like before when I talked about Nido King. Uh, Basically, it's a great mixed attacker with a great move pool. It's just not quite as defensive as Nidorino or Nido Queen when it's fully evolved. But it's still nice and powerful. And if you cannot make up your mind on a mixed attacker or you just need something to pull off attacks of a bunch of different types, Nidorino is your way to go. And you probably have a Moonstone by now that'll let you fully evolve it. Alright, now there's one other Pokemon that you can actually catch that uh, has technically already been obtainable to you. Uh, if you take the Super Rod and fish in any of the areas where you can actually uh, have a body of water... I never caught a Paris? Wow. I'm gonna try to catch this and just add it to my Pokedex. Um, anyway, 
Yeah, it's so easy to catch a Paris. Uh, anyway, if you use Super Ride in a body of water, you can catch Dragonair. And I've talked about Dragonite before and how it's one of the best Pokemon in the game once it's fully evolved. You can actually catch Dragonair at a pretty decent level now, around level 30, maybe a little higher. Um, but it's really rare. It's hard to catch because it's at full HP and all that good stuff. So I'd highly recommend just buying a Dratini at the Celadon Game Corner. It's way easier, way faster. Just, just don't worry about it here. Uh, anyway, there's a couple other Pokemon that I highly doubt I'm going to run into. All of them are actually normal type. Uh, Chansey, first up. Uh, even though it can't fully evolve in the main story of this game, it's still one of the best special walls in this entire generation. And with access to a pretty decent move pool, you can use this to stall opponents with status afflictions like Toxic. Uh, you can just tank uh, a bunch of hits uh, specially and use Calm Mind and actually become a good special attacker even though there are way better special attackers but if you so choose so that is a way to use Chansey. Chansey is a really good Pokemon. It's just ridiculously rare and I don't recommend hunting for it unless you desperately want one just to say hey I got it. I got the most annoying Pokemon to catch in all the Pokemon for Red and Blue Creek. Or red and blue, or yellow for that matter. But, um, and matter, matter. There we go. Uh, anyway, last Pokemon are Kangaskhan and Tauros. So, Kangaskhan was actually my original normal type choice for the LP. I only decided against it because of how rare it is and how late in the game I'd be getting it. And I didn't want to have just two Pokemon up to the fourth badge. So, that's why I went with Raticate instead. Um, above average stats, all around except special attack, which just means it's a physical attacker. You don't really need to be teaching any special attacks. Uh, great, good move pool, great choice. If you can grab one, consider using it. Tauros, it's a bit faster and stronger than Kangaskhan, so for those of you that prefer power over bulkiness, you'll be having an HGM soon that you can use to take advantage of the stat for Tauros and Kangaskhan, so either one will be useful if you pick it up, but like I said, if you want uh, faster and more powerful, Tauros over Kangaskhan now. There's an item right there, but I'm going to pass it up for now. Let's see. Request notice. Please find the Safari Warden's Lost Gold Teeth. They're around here somewhere. Reward offered contact Warden. Okay, so whoever put the sign up says that there are teeth around here somewhere. One, two, three, four. Pivot. Four steps away and a pivot and you find dude I'm pretty sure it would have taken the person less time to come over here and pick up these teeth than to punch this hole into the ground smack it down uh, smack down the side with a hammer ah, logic where is it uh, TM double team uh, I'm not gonna use that basically it raises your evasiveness but I never ever use it <laughs> Ah, finally! You're the first person to reach the secret house! Although I made a campaign for our grand opening, I was getting worried that no one would win our campaign prize. Congratulations! You have won! I swear, last time I heard that, I didn't really win anything. I just got a little flashing box that could have caused seizures. To people that can get seizures. Anyway, uh, TM, I'm sorry, HMO3 Surf will basically allow you to surf over water, so. Instead of just fishing like this, you can actually ride over the water if you teach Surf to a Pokemon. Plus, it's a really powerful move. Uh, 95 power, 100 accuracy. Ooh, Deceit King, who I actually did not talk about. Um, Sea King. Not one of my favorite water types. It's, it's just not that great, honestly. There's not much I can say about this. It can learn Waterfall uh, by leveling up, which is an HM that you'll get much later in the game. Um, but it's really not worth it, honestly. And there's one other Pokemon that I can go over, but I was particularly waiting so I can uh, get the HM Surf and HM that we're about to get because we found the Warden's Teeth. So let me go ahead and run out of Pokeballs or something. Run out of steps, run out of Pokeballs. And I'll be right back after I uh, do one of those things. I want to get out of the Safari Zone, but I still want to try to catch as many Pokemon as possible. Because I will need 60 Pokemon in my Pokedex. Well, time's up. <laughs> anyway, let's go back to the Warden. So, where's the Warden? Just head down here. 
There's actually a house with his name on the sign. So, right here? Yeah. As far as a uh, warden's home. Let's hop in. John gave the gold teeth to Warden and. Just popped in his teeth. Thanks, Sean. You're a real lifesaver. No one could understand a word that I said. Not a one. I was too ashamed to show my face around the office, even. Let me give you something for your trouble. Dude, you lost your teeth. No big. D That's not a the end of the world. Embarrassed because you lost your teeth. Dude, it if they're not real teeth, it can happen. It. Write that on a piece of paper. You have a fossil and an old Pokemon merchandise. You have all this old stuff, but you don't have a piece of paper and a pencil to say, hey, I lost my teeth. That's why you don't understand a word I'm saying. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and try to teach a Pokemon strength. Who do I have that can learn that, and who do I want to teach that? All right, to the top. Uh, let's see. Who learns it? Uh, mm, I don't want to teach it to Kate because Hyper Fang's better. Oh, you know what? Sandshrew. There you go. <laughs> My HM slave. You can use it for a little bit. And as for Surf, I could teach that to Hotness, but there's another Pokemon I actually want to teach that to. So, yeah. I may have spoiled a couple episodes ago that I'm probably going to have a water type as my last Pokemon member, but I never specified which one. Let me go next door real quick, talk to this guy. I'm the fishing guru's older brother. I simply love fishing. I can't bear to go without. Tell me, do you like to fish? Grand, I like your style. I think we could be friends. Take this and fish, young friend. Good rod. Yeah, we get the good rod after the super rod if you went down this path over here. So, technically, you could get the good rod before the super rod if you go down the other path because... Like, I don't know why you'd want to, but there you go. Well, it is the faster path, so I guess, but either way, you can get the super rod before the good rod, which is so weird. Now... I don't really need the good rod. I can actually use the super rod to catch the Pokemon I want to catch. And that Pokemon is... Poliwhirl! Yes, you can actually catch Poliwag uh, as well as Poliwhirl, but I'll just jump right to Poliwhirl. Balance and average stats across the board. Has access to Hypnosis, which you can use to put folks to sleep, even though it's kind of inaccurate. Uh, good move pool, and with the ability Water Absorb, it can heal 25% of its HP when it's hit by Water Move, so... It's not as good in this generation as later generations, but it's one of my favorite Pokemon just in general, just as the Pokemon itself, like ignoring stats and stuff. Um, it actually is one of the few Pokemon that got a stat boost in Generation 6. Uh, even though this isn't Generation 6, I think it's fun to use, and that's why it's my final team member. Now, as far as water types go, there's a lot in the game, and... Something that can use Surf is required, so it's sometimes hard to choose a water Pokemon for me, it, especially if I don't, well, okay, if I start with a water Pokemon, I don't have to worry about catching another one, but when I don't choose a water starter, it's kind of difficult for me sometimes. Uh, like Sea King, for example, how we just passed that up, it's... Its stats really aren't too great, and it doesn't stand out as a water type, and it mo learns moves like Mega Horn and Agility, Horn Drill. Those are good moves and all, but it, it learns it so late. It's insane. And there you go, this Poliwhirl just used Hypnosis on me, so it could be a very beneficial Pokemon. Um, Slowbro was actually my original choice as a water Pokemon because it learned similar moves. Like, instead of Hypnosis, I would have taught it Calm Mind and maybe just an all-out, uh, special attacker. Which was actually gonna be really funny, cause... Later on, you can, uh, get TMs for, uh, Flamethrower, you can already get one for Fire Blast, I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, you can get TMs for Flamethrower and, uh, Fire Blast. Slowbro can actually learn those moves. Which I would have thought is hilarious, a Water-type with Fire-type moves? Like... That would have been awesome. 
But anyway, uh, I think overall, if Slowbro would have been just too powerful, it would have made this way too easy. Poliwhirl will actually give me some sort of challenge, plus, like I said, it's one of my favorite Pokemon. And unfortunately, I didn't catch it here, which is just bad luck. I'm going to have to try to catch another one, uh, which is no big deal. I got the bio out of the way, and I'll see you guys in just a second when I find another Poliwhirl. All right, that's perfect. It's actually the second Pokemon I ran into. I fought another Poliwag, uh, and I actually did fight it so that I could um, wake up Brute Root. Uh, see, status inflictions do help catch Pokemon. Like, e even though Poison was doing a lot of damage and so was Leech Seed, like, usually this is how I catch Pokemon. Like, uh, not legendaries and stuff, of course, but just regular generic Pokemon. This is how I've been doing it. I've been using Poison Powder to weaken them and uh, give them a status infliction. And I've been using Leech Seed to just do a little more damage without me actually killing it. So all those Pokemon you saw me catch, well, you didn't see me catch, but you saw them in the box. Every single one of those Pokemon. Poison Powder, Leech Seed, Pokeball, caught. Every single one. Unless I bought them from the Celadon Game Corner or something. Alright, look how low it is right now, and I haven't really done anything to it, so hopefully this one actually catches it. Three, and... There you go! I don't know why the last one was so stubborn, but it does suck that I'm three levels under what I was before. Ah, but it's no big deal. It can live in or out of water, when out of water, it constantly sweats to keep its body slimy. Gross. Anyway, give a nickname to the Poliwhirl? Yes! Um... Even though it doesn't really have anything to do with what I'm actually going to use it for. Holly Whirl? It's a water type? Whirlpool! Yeah, kind of simple, probably not the most original name, but hey, I like it. So why not? And besides, uh, Poly Whirl's final evolution, well, not kind of Polito because it's not in this game. Oh, you can't obtain it in the main story anyway. When you evolve Poliwhirl, it's basically a big buffed up version of Poliwhirl, so why not? Uh, actually, let's go to my HMs and TMs. Oh, actually, I gotta go withdraw <laughs> Whirlpool. Oops. BRB. Okay, and yeah, you may have noticed I was in Viridian City. I just went to that patch right, uh, patch. That little body of water right there so I could uh, catch the Poliwhirl. And I'm not really going to cover all these new Pokemon as we go and show them in old routes and stuff. If I happen to pass by, maybe that's about it. Uh, but anyway, to the TM case. Not fly, surf. Let's go down to Whirlpool, teach him that. And yeah, let's definitely get rid of Bubble. Okay, so now, really powerful stab move. Okay, let's move down a little more, and as most water types can, it can also learn Ice Beam. So let's teach an Ice Beam as well, which will be a very good coverage move. Um, let's get rid of Water Gun. Like, no matter what water Pokemon you decide to go with, I recommend teaching an Ice Beam. At least if it's special attack isn't worthless. Uh, and also, we got Brick Break a while back. And while it's not ideal to have a uh, mixed attacking Poliwhirl, YOLO. <laughs> this is just one last move to teach it, so it's got something besides Double Slap. And now let's take a look at Poliwhirl. I'll go ahead and... Can I switch moves here? No, I... Wait, yes I can. Oops, okay, there we go. So, hypnosis to put foes to sleep. Surf and Ice Beam for very powerful uh, attacks and decent uh, super effective hits for a number of Pokemon. And then Brick Break, just for a little extra coverage, also breaks down Light Screen and Reflect, so that's an extra plus. Not that I'll see that too often. 
But uh, yeah, this is a pretty solid moveset. I'd say I wouldn't have to change it at all. And with that said... Let's use the Water Stone on our newly obtained Whirlpool. So I would say this is a very eventful episode. We kind of breezed through the Safari Zone and got all those bios taken care of. We actually covered that Seeking a little late. You actually could have gotten that before you went in the Safari Zone. And then finally... Got my final Pokemon fully evolved. All the moves are what it needs to be. This is the final team right here. Of course, we got a couple Pokemon that still need to evolve, but uh, Brew Root's actually only one level away, and Tripolar, I think it's mm, three? I forget exactly when uh, Dodo evolves into Dodrio, but this is the final team. Not the most common Pokemon you see. I mean, the starter, you, you have to let the starter slide. <laughs> Everyone has to pick one of the three. But, uh, yeah, I don't see too many people using too many of these Pokemon. So, I want to be a little more unique, use some different Pokemon, and hopefully I accomplish that. So, let's head back to... Over Shaft Fuchsia City. Let's head back to Fuchsia City. And in the next episode... We'll take on the gym, which is actually right next to the uh, Pokemon Center. And one little quick note before I go anywhere. Uh, oh, yes, I'm the move deleter. I can make Pokemon forget their moves. Would you like me to do that? No! No, 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 I do not want to forget moves. Now, um, honestly, that's not a bad thing. HMs you cannot forget uh, by just replacing it. You have to get it physically removed by that guy. So... If you're done with an HM and you don't want it anymore, like Cut, for example, uh, then you can go to him, get it deleted, and then replace it with another move. Another move, excuse me. Uh, but anyway, that's enough of that, and we got a lot done in this episode, even though it was rather short, uh, in my opinion, compared to what it could have been. We just did the Safari Zone. Uh, but anyway, next episode, we take on the next gym. See you guys then. Till then, thank you guys very much for watching. Bye-bye-bye.